Hello everybody, thank you for clicking on that thumbnail for today's video and if you are new, my name is Chris. Today's video is another haul video. I usually do pickups and passes at the end of the month but I really don't have anything I want to declutter or get rid of at the time being so it's all going to be a haul video. So I'm going to jump right in. The first one up is another cupcake from the House of Siage. I think this makes cupcake number six for me. And it is called Emerald Rain. And I remember very clearly sniffing this one about five or six years ago in a very fancy department store in Chicago. At the time it had a, like a bejeweled tiger, I think on the top. And it was very, very expensive and has subsequently sold out. But I loved the fragrance and I never forgot it. And when I saw it this summer, I wanna say this was buy one, get one free or get one at half off, but I kind of jumped on it. And because I knew what it smelled like, a couple of House of Siages I have purchased blindly, I do not recommend that. I did that because of the specials that they have, but they are still pricey, but I was super excited that I had smelled this one already. This is a gorgeous, spicy amber. I love ambers and I love spices. And this actually was my scent of the day today. So, and it's actually made by one of my favorite um, perfumers. I love Francis Curtijan, but this is Mark Buxton. And I like a lot of what he has come out with over the years. And this is a gorgeous, warm, oh, spicy amber. This is a creamy, sweet, warm. The spices in this um, are nutmeg, coriander, and cardamom but what i smell the most is nutmeg so imagine a really well done smooth amber with without a lot of edges just really cream creamy and smooth and add a really heavy dose of nutmeg it makes it really really warm the coriander is so far in the background i could barely smell it and the cardamom is barely there it just adds a little bit of a kick but the coriander and the cardamom completely disappear about hour one to two, and you're left with this gorgeous, warm, nutmeggy amber. I will tell you that I wore this to work today. I typically don't wear these type of fragrances to work. They kind of break my rules on what to wear to work, but I can get away with a little bit since we are still wearing things over our face, um, and I do have my own office, is that uh, a, a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine who typically doesn't like heavy fragrances, she only likes just light floral fragrances. We were doing something together, she smelled me and said, you smell so good. So I think this is just very universally appealing. I absolutely love it. There is this beautiful, smooth sandalwood in here that just adds to the creaminess. To me, this is a very, very timeless fragrance. It, kind of smells like something I have smelled in the past, maybe when I was growing up. It just smells so classic and timeless, but it doesn't smell dated. I love it and I'm super thrilled with this pickup, Emerald Rain. Next one up is a fragrance I got in a fun sample swap with a dear friend, and I think I got the better deal. It is by Elizab, and this is Essence Number no. 3, the Amber fragrance. I Again, another amber fragrance. I love ambers. This is a different type of amber, but it's beautiful nonetheless. This is a woody, very resinous, very sweet, and incensey amber. Completely different ambers, but ambers nevertheless. This is what I would consider a dark amber. It has um, amber, there is an amber accord, there's patchouli, there's opopanax, which is a very sweet and spicy resin. There is sandalwood and patchouli, and this is just a gorgeous, sweet, dark, strong amber. This is a powerhouse. If I, When I do another powerhouse video, fragrances that are really strong and project, this one will be in it. The first day I got it, I put it on my bathrobe, which I usually do, and it lasted over a week. Absolutely gorgeous, definitely gender neutral, and love it. The next fragrance up is, is one that took me a while to purchase. I wasn't quite 
ready to make the commitment. It was I was on the fence for a while. It is very unique fragrance and I don't have anything like it in my collection. And it is my first Ordo Parisi fragrance and it is called Tironi. Something very interesting about the bottle. If you look at the cap, you it is a very textured, the lid is very textured and it is supposed to mimic what the ground around Mount Vesuvius, the volcano, is supposed to look like after it has kind of scorched the earth. So this is a very scorched earth fragrance. It is a spicy, deep, woody, amber fragrance. And it, the point of view or what you are supposed to think when you smell this is what that ground, that earth, the roots and the dirt and the trees smell like after they have been kind of scorched. And I really do think you you get that in this fragrance. It is very woody, it's spicy, it's dark, it's deep, and it's just smoky. Very, very smoky. But the smokiness is in a sweet and spicy direction. It is earthy and I would say a touch animalic. And I will list the notes up here. I don't have them, I, don't, I haven't even looked them up. So um, I do not know what the notes are, but I know what it smells like and I've worn it a couple times. And this is another super powerhouse fragrance. This thing, again, I sprayed this on my robe as well, going strong after several, several days. Um, I think this is, you either really enjoy it or you don't like it a lot. I know the Mister is not a huge fan of this, even though I think it's very, it's a very captivating fragrance for sure. And, and I love to layer this with something that's sweet, like a vanilla. I, I just love that it's, it gives it a real sweet richness and depth. It kind of takes that smoky animalic edge off it and makes it really, really nice. So yeah, I look forward to wearing this more. Like if I were to ever go to a bonfire, this is what I would wear because my clothes, after I spray this, smell very similar to what I smell like after I'm at like a, like a fun bonfire for a couple hours. So. Yeah, really, really interesting, fun fragrance. The next one is a collection. It's a trio from The Sense of Wood. I've been wanting to try The Sense of Wood for a while and you can kind of, the one I ordered was a custom box where you pick the three scents that you are interested in. And I got, let's see, I got sandalwood and oak. I have cedar and acacia and I have cedar, wait, hmm, orange and chestnut. So I'll go through those separately. So let's see, the first one, so this will be cedar and acacia. And I'm always looking for the perfect woody or the perfect forest fragrance. I want to smell like a forest. I want to smell like when you are skiing on a really cold day and you're going on a pass in between the runs and you just, those evergreens surround you. I want to smell like that. And I want to smell like when you go hiking and you're in the, the woods. That's what I want to smell like all the time. I'm always looking for the perfect woody fragrance. Um, these are very, very nice. The first one, the cedar and acacia is a very, is a bright fragrance. It's a bright, woody, zingy fragrance. This is not my favorite of the bunch, but it's very nice. This has, this has ginger in it. So definitely the ginger comes through. It's a very zingy, um, bright fragrance. There is amber in here, not a typical amber at all but an amber nevertheless. There is cinnamon in here, but it's not cinnamony. I think there's cinnamon bark, so it's not really very sweet. And there is, there's cypriol in here. I have cypriol in many of the fragrances that I own, and it gives it an earthy, kind of an earthy spiciness. So yeah, that is a nice one. I think this would be good for someone who lived in a warmer climate. Um, it didn't want a heavy woody fragrance. So this would, this would be a good option. So cedar and acacia. Okay. So the next one, what do we have here? I think we have orange and chestnut. Um, this one I think is the one that has a heavy floral note. Let me, everything I've owned, worn at least once. And I never just test on paper. I have never done a review or a discussion when I've only sniffed something on paper. Everything has been worn by me, by my person, at least once. Um, and a couple of these I've worn a couple times. Yes, that's it. This is Neroli. So this is a very heavy 
neroli forward fragrance. It's very bright. I do like neroli. Sometimes neroli can be a little bit on the bitter side. So this is heading into that direction, but it does not get too bitter. It's a little sharp at first, um, but it's really, really nice. There are two different types of cedar in here, even though it's orange and chestnut. Um, and it has this aroma chemical in it that is supposed to smell dry and woody. I think it's called Amber Extreme. I will list the notes up here if I, if I can find them, but there is a little bit of another floral note in here. I would, I think it is jasmine. It smells a touch jasmine-y and it's, it's not quite the fragrance that I thought it would be. I thought it would be a little bit more woody, a little bit more chestnutty. It's more of a floral woody fragrance. Um, so if you really like your florals, this would probably be right up your alley. I think this is another one that would be really good in the warmer climates in the summer. This would be great for summer. This is a good, sometimes you don't wanna, or I don't wanna wear heavy woody fragrances, thick woody fragrances in the summer. So this would be good in the summer. So the last fragrance is sandalwood and oak. This is my favorite of the trio. And this was recently released in 2021. And the concept behind this was a fragrance as a source of healing because it uses sandalwood and it uses incense. And those are two components or two materials that have been used over time in different types of healing, whether it was medical or religious. Um, yeah, this one is my very favorite. I love sandalwood and I love incense and you can smell them both. There is... The incense is smoky. It's a touch frankincense-y. There is a little bit of vanilla that I get more in the dry down that kind of sweetens it. It adds a sweetness. It kind of tempers the smokiness. There are some mineral notes in here, which is a modern fragrance note or a chord. And the idea was to take notes that are that have been used over time some very older older or antiquated notes and kind of combine them with some more modern notes to make a contemporary but timeless fragrance. And there's one other type of wood in here. I want to say it's, uh, it's guayac wood, which also is very smooth, kind of smooths it out. I think that's called Palo Santo as well. This is very nice. This is um, very nice woody fragrance. It's not overly sweet. If you're looking for a sweet woody fragrance, this is not it, but this is a lovely, creamy, smoky, incense-y fragrance with a touch of sweetness as it dries down. And it is, it's just, I really like it. I like it a lot. The next one up is a fragrance I bought as a result of a really fun and very successful sample swap I did with Annalisa here on YouTube. She's also a creator and I will link her channel down below. This is called Radio Bombay and this is by Diaz and Durga. Let's see if that's coming into focus there. This to me is sandalwood and cedar done to perfection. This is not a perfect sandalwood scent. This is not a perfect cedar scent, but the two combined is just absolutely spectacular to my nose. And I know that Annalisa loves it as well. This is, this so appeals to me. This smells so good. This is fresh and creamy. There is coconut in here which gives it a creaminess. It gives it a little bit of sweetness. This is just so nice. The inspiration for this fragrance is an old wooden, hence the sandalwood, an old wooden radio in Mumbai that is playing music and it's very hot outside. There are a lot of people outside though, so there's a lot of musk and sweat in the air and the, and the, fra or, and the, the music is being piped through copper tubes. So there's supposed to be some sort of a metallic coppery accord to this fragrance. I tell you, I don't really get that a whole lot. 
Maybe, maybe it's a touch metallic. That sounds off-putting. It's, it, it's such a good fragrance. Um, I really just kind of get a cedar with an edge that's creamy without being overly woody. And sometimes wood, woody fragrances can be a touch animalic and uh, really creamy sandalwood, so, so good. Here's the drawback, it's, um, on me it's super quiet. It's just a, like I can completely overspray and I can get it at most to last four hours, which is no big deal. When a fragrance smells this good, I, it doesn't matter. I will, I will wear it and reapply and I don't want every single last fragrance of mine to be overpowering because that means I can wear this to work and I can wear this in a lot of different situations. So another really fun pickup of mine, Radio Bombay. Next one up is my very first full bottle of Zoologist. I have tried several from the Zoologist brand and I love their idea. I love their creativity and the thought behind each fragrance. My problem is I will try a fragrance and I will like 80 to 90% of it, but there's like that 10 to 20% that I just cannot get over. And I know that they're just very creative and trying to be out of the box, but for me, sometimes it's just too far out of the box and just too animalic or just a little bit weird. But um, when I tried this one, I was super excited because I really did like the fragrance and it is Chipmunk. I mean, just first of all, look at the bottle. That label is just, that little guy is super, it's just too cute. Anyways, um, so I was surprised when I tried this for the first time. I thought this was going to be a nutty fragrance. It's not a nutty fragrance. It's really a predominantly woody fragrance. And when I accepted that, I was ready for a full bottle. So it's a lovely, woody fragrance with some nutty undertones. It has some fruits at the top. I believe it's quince and mandarin. Quince may be orange. It just gives it a touch of freshness. It has a touch. It's a little bit spicy, but it's not overly spicy. It's very much in the background. Uh, I believe, you know, there's always coriander and there's definitely nutmeg because this is a very warm, spicy fragrance and it is a little bit sweet either from some resins and or vanilla and it dries sweeter with time. Uh, like I said, or if I haven't said already, I've only worn this, you know, less than a handful of times and in the cold weather, it's been really, really nice. And there's, this does have an, I think it's just an animal note. Listen, animal note. And I don't detect anything animalic at all, thankfully, but I would say that it is particularly in the dry down, it's very, it's very warm. It's a warm kind of a fuzzy fragrance. So maybe that is where the, the animal notes come in, you know, uh, for the little creature. So yeah, chipmunk, I'm thrilled with this one. If you have been following me, you know I'm very interested in clean fragrance brands. I have already done a couple of house overviews in the past. I am planning on doing a couple more the next overview I will be doing is on the house of St. Rose and the fragrance that I have today um, that is in my possession from that house is called Vigilante. This is a spectacular fragrance and I am super excited to talk about it today. I had posted on my Instagram the, um, the discovery set and I think I read about this fragrance house in a magazine, you know, one of those old fashioned things that you hold in your hand and you turn the pages. I'm a big fan of them, but I read about it. I want to say it was Vogue magazine and I was immediately drawn to the fun, whimsical names of several fragrances. They include Gypsy Cowboy and Desert Nomad, J Juliet in White, Grand Larceny, Vigilante and Circa 91. And I thought, just from the name, I was going to have a bottle of Gypsy Cowboy and Desert Nomad. And what turned out is that my favorite fragrances were Vigilante and Juliet in White. And then I think, I mean, I like all of them, but my full bottles will be Vigilante, Juliet in White, and probably Circa 91 next. So one of the lovely things about this fragrance house is that the discovery set, the cost of the discovery set, which I believe is 45 or 50 dollars, 
If you purchase a full bottle, they will refund that and put it towards the purchase of a full bottle. For example, I bought this Discovery set, and so I actually just purchased Juliet in White uh, yesterday, and so the cost of my Discovery set came off of that bottle. So it was $50 less than the full price, which was very nice. So that's like getting a free Discovery set. Um, they usually send you a code when you order your discovery set and I couldn't find my code so I reached out to the lovely people, um, customer service at, at St. Rose and they were so gracious and not only sent me my code but were very appreciative of me enjoying and highlighting these clean fragrances and they gifted me any, the bottle of my choice which I was very thrilled. And so I chose Vigilante, and the reason why, they were all so amazing. But this one, just for right now, as we go into the cold weather, is something that I really want to wear. So just a little background on St. Rose, and then I'll save the rest of the information for the house overview that I will do in a couple days, and I highly, highly recommend. This is a fantastic house, but St. Rose is a conscious luxury brand that is rooted in nature. Their fragrances are sustainable, they're cleanly formulated, they're gender neutral, and they are handcrafted. They are clean, they are consciously made, and they are of luxury quality. So vigilante is derived from a Latin term which basically means to be wide awake. So when I chose this fragrance I had no idea I was choosing one of the top fragrances of 2020. This was actually a top five in the Fragrance Federation's best indie fragrances of 2020. I believe that because it's such a great fragrance and when you discover how it is made, it makes it even more spectacular. I'll just quickly go over this and then again, I will spend more time in my house overview where I will talk about all the other amazing fragrances from this line. So a big part of their fragrances is sandalwood and the sandalwood that they procure is from a particular uh, farm in Australia, which is 50% indigenously owned. And the other major notes in here are upcycled cedarwood atlas and upcycled rose. So upcycled cedarwood atlas is taking the dust, the wood dust that it is emitted when you create furniture, the dust and the wood shavings that normally would just be tossed um, in the trash and the rubbish. So they take the dust and they distill it to get an essential oil. They do another distraction of that of that oil to concentrate it even further to create some depth of the fragrance. And then they take for the rose notes or the rose aspect of the fragrance, they take the, the water that is typically discarded, making rose essential oil, that water that is discarded in the process, they take that, they distill it even further, concentrate it. What they end up with is something that smells very different, stronger, and has more dimension to the fragrance. So you've got this beautiful, kind of a spicy, slightly fruity wood, and you have this rose that just is rich and I think it's a little bit spicy, has some fruity notes. So that rose essential oil that comes out or the upcycle rose concentrate they call it, smells completely different. It's it's kind of a modern take on rose. It's they as they describe it, it's not your 80s rose. It is a more modern rose. It has different facets. It's a little bit deeper and has some tobacco facets to it and some fruit, fruity uh, tones or nuances. It's just a gorgeous fragrance. So it's a woody, it's a woody, rosy fragrance with a little bit of brightness at the top. I think there's, you know, there's bergamot at the top and some cypress, which does give it kind of a, a green freshness. Let me tell you, this fragrance is really, really amazing. I really enjoyed it. Again, the general neutral, my husband loves it as well and it has great lasting power. I think it's it gets me about four to six hours. So I've been loving this fragrance and I'm thrilled that I have this um, as part of my fragrance wardrobe. The next one up is Vanilla Diorama. I don't know if the lighting's gonna let me zoom in on the, uh, the bottle label, but this is the, I think it's the newest release from Christian Dior, Diorama. I'm probably gonna buy basically any vanilla fragrance that comes out. 
I'm a big vanilla lover and this one was no, I blind bought this. That's why I got the small bottle. I, I do think that the bigger bottles are more economical. You can get four times the fragrance for half the cost, but buying it blindly, I was only willing to get the small bottle and I'm really happy. The, the inspiration of this fragrance is a dessert. I think that was made for Christian Dior back in the day and it was called a Diorama and it was made especially for him. It had some vanilla in it. There was chocolate, maybe some bitter orange. So there are a lot of similarities or the fragrance and the, and the dessert share a lot of similarities. There's some other notes that um, I will list over here, but this is basically a, a vanilla, orangey, chocolatey, slightly resinous, fragrance that still smells like um, a perfume. It does not smell like a complete gourmand, like something that you would eat. It still has a perfumey aspect to it. The opening is very orangey. There are some amber, there's an amber accord in here that gives it a nice, I'm gonna call it a perfuminess. So um, not overly sweet. The vanilla I get more in the dry down. As it dries down, the vanilla come, really comes out. It's basically an amber, an orangey amber fragrance in the beginning. And as it dries down, it gets nice and sweet. So um, performance on this has been pretty good. Four to six hours is what I remember. I've only worn this a couple times. So I'm glad I have it and look forward to wearing it more in the future. The next one up is something that I've mentioned in my last two or three videos. So I don't want to go on and on and on. I'll just mention briefly that I got Regime de Fleurs. This is my this is my beautiful, woody, spicy, incense -y fragrance. It smells like woods. There's juniper and oak and probably cedar. It has some lovely incense-y, frankincense -y notes. It is earthy and spicy from some Cipriol, and I love it. It's just, it's perfect for this time of the year. It's perfect for someone who loves the outdoors and likes to spend time in the outdoors. It's a quiet scent and it doesn't project really loudly it doesn't last forever but i still i love it and the last one is probably the prettiest bottle and it's the one that i took the longest to purchase it is by stefan imbert lucas and it is called wish come true the light is really coming through that side window i don't know if you can see it but it's just a beautiful a beautiful bottle and i originally got a sample of this in the summer of 2020 and I got the teensy weensy little dabber sample from Lucky Scent and I wore it on a really hot day in the summer and I just thought, I don't know if this is the fragrance for me. And I kind of put it away for a while and I dug it back out and this, and I put it in an atomizer and I sprayed the atomizer on some clothes. I have very sensitive skin so before I start going to town on a fragrance, I like to try it out on on my clothes so that I know that I like it before I risk getting a rip roaring rash from a fragrance. So um, now I was really surprised the way it smelled on my clothes. It didn't smell the way I thought it would smell because I know that this is an, a florally incense vanilla fragrance. I got zero vanilla when I sprayed it on my clothes and I thought, well, maybe this just isn't the fragrance for me. Fortunately, I tried it again um, a couple months ago, and this time I put it on my forearms. And this fragrance does something really different when you spray it on skin and when you spray it on clothes or paper. I don't really have anything else that is so different on skin than it is on clothes and paper. And when you spray this on the skin, that's when the magic comes, that's when the magic happens that's when I really fell for this fragrance. That's when the vanilla came, really came out for me. This is a, this is a, a slightly citrusy, incense-y, florally vanilla fragrance. And I got zero vanilla um, when I sprayed it on my clothes. But the floral in here, so the incense is very strong in here. The incense is strong. It has ylang ylang in here, a yellow floral. Yes, it's very pretty, but it is very floral in the beginning. It, and it has some very bright citruses, which kind of just amps up these floral notes. It, it kind of 
Ylang Ylang tends to be a softer, more buttery floral in my opinion, and the, the citrus notes really kind of make it a touch screechy in the beginning. This fragrance has the most noticeable note of ambergris out of all my fragrances. It is very, there's a prominent musky saltiness in this one. It's very, very prominent. And it's really prominent on paper, and it's very prominent on um, clothes. When you spray it on the skin, it's not as prominent. But if you do not like a heavy note of ambergris, this is probably not going to be up your alley. This is So I really fell in love with it um, recently, letting it kind of marinate on my skin and letting all the wonderful, lovely notes really come to fruition. So this is a lovely complex, very unique scent. I don't have anything in my collection that's like it. And I, I really, I don't have to love or be head over heels with a fragrance as long as I enjoy it and it is unique and adds something um, to my fragrance wardrobe. So I'm very happy with this. This is not a casual fragrance. This to me is something I'm going to wear when I am dressed up, when I'm going somewhere at a minimum, a, a date, a, a night out, um, to the symphony, to a fundraiser, something special. This is not a casual fragrance, in my opinion, but it is, I would call it lovely. It's lovely, it's beautiful and unique, and it's, on me, it's very strong. Four to six hours minimum. So, yeah, that's my wish come true. So that is it for this month's pickups. I will probably have enough passes for the next month's go around. But that'll do it for today. Thank you again for sticking around. I would love to hear if you guys have added anything to your fragrance collection or if you've tried any of the ones I've spoken about. Thank you again to all who support me. Thank you for sticking around and I will see you on the next one.